I'll start off with the famous uh, song that Fred Wedlock wrote for me. It's got a chorus. Uh, unlike most chorus songs, the chorus in this one becomes in front of every second verse. I'm only doing this because I know I know this one. It's got a chorus. If you want to join it, it goes like this. For Robin was a bloke and he owned many bows. Kept them all nice and clean. And he died in his prime at the age of 99 with a nasty case of eyeball gangrene. It's very colourful. Uh, if you want, really nice. <laughs> there's a dance match going on downstairs. It's fantastic. Have you ever seen him play the dance? I was in the other bar and I could hear him yelling out numbers like uh, 560 fewer, 983, 862. And I said to the landlord, what are they doing in there? He said, playing darts. I said, bloody hell, how do you get darts? I mean, you can't score them sort of scores throwing darts. I said, you can do if you throw hedgehogs. <laughs> I'll just do with this. <laughs> For Robin was a bloke and he owned many bows, kept them all nice and clean. And he died in his prime at the age of 99 with a nasty case of eyeball gangrene. Robin Hood was a bloke and he tromped across the land. He was fighting arrows here and there. And he fired at the witch and he mowed down the poor And sometimes he did a passing deer Now Maid Marion was his missus and she had two lovely eyes And feet as big as boats But he let her hang around cause she's the only bird he's found What old daily give him is not a give evening post Oh, Robin was a bloke and he owned many bows Kept them all nice and clean he died in his prime at the age of 99 with a nasty case of eyeball gangrene. When it came to singing songs, well, they could not go wrong, for their minstrel's name was Alan Adale. And he minstrel through the day and he gurgled through the night till they stuffed him in a king of shipstones pail. The fire's name was Tuck and he didn't give a damn He never helped them when they had a fight No, he never helped them hunt, oh, he was a lazy fire He just sat boozing day and night For Robin was a bloke and he owned many bows Kept them all nice and clean And he died in his prime at the age of 32 <laughs> With a nasty case of eyeball Met a man on a log by the name of Little Jog. Well, that's got a rhyme, in it? <laughs> and he made Robin look a proper twit. For he up to win his pole and he scored a perfect goal and sent Robin flying in the water. <laughs> now a man was being hung and Robin said, That's wrong, we'll put a stop to yon execution eye on, he said. So he loaded up his bow and he let his adder go and got the poor bugger through the head. For Robin was a bloke and he owned many bows, kept them all nice and clean. And he died in his prime at the age of 99 with a nasty case of eyeball gangrene. And as long as the world is here, and as long as blokes drink beer, and as long as two and two equal five, and as long as clipper ships keep on smuggling cannabis pips, the name of Robin Hood will stay alive. 
his rope bounce across the land be passed from hand to hand his deeds exaggerated by the gross they will glorify his name and they will cover up with fame the dirty warming bastard that he was for Robin was a bloke and he owed many bows kept him all nice and clean and he died in his prime at the age of 99 with a nasty case of eyeball gangrene yeah 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 yes he died in his prime at the age of 99 from eating with so whip his eyes clean bum 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 I'm being flogged to death by Richard Green bum 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 I walk up my bimbo down by some shoes for me bum 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 Bill Bailey won't you please come on no not again of a biblical bloke, an eerie great brute of a man. Brute. Brute. Badute. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, me man told you he'll come in. They christened him Samson the day he were born, but his mates called him Muscly Sam. Now, Samson, contrary to popular belief, looked no like Victor Mature. Because <laughs> Samson had muscles, what bulged out in places where Vic had no places at all. <laughs> in one famous battle, in biblical archives, <laughs> Samson completed the job by bashing the baddies with a bloody great soup bone. So it's a bone from a jackass's gob. <laughs> he swung it, he flung it, he eaved it and cleaved it. <laughs> and never stopped once for a breath. And due to the fact that the bones still had teeth in, he literally bit them to death. <laughs> Now, after the battle, his 10% agent <laughs> spoke to the press in the square and made up the tale that the strength of Sam's muscles was due to the length <laughs> of his ear. So the baddies decided to make him a skinhead <laughs> and make him all timid and weak. Because the armies were striking rather than fighting this bloody great muscle band freak. So Delilah, concealing a large pair of snippers, invited him up to her bed. But instead of them letching or looking at etchings, she locked all his locks off instead. <laughs> Dazed and amazed. It's got a rhyme. <laughs> by his kinky behaviour, he just stared aghast in his strife. <clears throat> then the door burst open, the baddies rushed in with a big book before them saying, Samson, this were your life. <laughs> now these what wads, now anybody that doesn't come from Nottingham, I'll translate that. What that actually means, uh, now these what wads, what galvanised Samson, and though he were too weak to fight, he collapsed the columns what held up their pad <laughs> in an outburst of muscular might. <laughs> With a deafening crash of balsa wood rafters. <laughs> <clears throat> now the palace was note, but a glorified prefab. Like the ones Wimpy make, even now. Designed by a firm called Demilo and Cecil. So what else would it do but fall down? You're not going to laugh at this. With a deafening crash of balsa rafters. 
The building collapsed in an heap. But the pile was bigger and denser and thicker. Because Samson was still underneath. <laughs> Due to the fact that he poked out his peepers and his pupils had gone home on strike, Sam hadn't known that he stood there alone because the baddies had buggered off outside. <laughs> so ends the tale of Musculi Samson, destined to live till he died. <laughs> Proving that brains were no match for brawn. Well, at least a daft bugger tried. <laughs> All right. I now attempt something I've never done before. <laughs> I'm going to do a, uh, a blues. Surprise! This is a very well-known blues. It uh, tells a story of a cowboy that was galloping madly one night over the desert looking for his horse. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked overhead and there, coming through the clouds, was a great phantom herd of cows all with athlete's foot and <laughs> dysentery and he only had out a five gallon hat. <laughs> now this song comes under the classification of a browns. Very similar to a blues but with smellier chords. I will attempt what I'm going to attempt and if I can't I'll go into well, I know I can attempt. Just to add a bit of atmosphere. He made a stop at every pub as he wobbled on his way. When all at once a mighty lump of red-eyed cow he saw halfway down Arkwright Street, <laughs> slouched against the door. Her eyes were red as fire and her body stank of sweat <laughs> And what her bowels could not contain had made the pavements wet <laughs> The grottiness of countenance was more than he could explain Except that he'd seen nicer things Ooh, seeing down a drain <laughs> She opened up her toothless gob and then began to croak. Twenty woodbines for the look and forty for the grope. <laughs> <laughs> then she cleared her throat and flobbed a glob of something to the earth as a bargain in the putrid air on the value of her worth. She pressed her body up to him to try and raise a price. She beard her up a torso to the client's hungry eyes. The Irishman just stood aghast, amazed by what he'd saw. He'd seen ostrich eggs in bras before. 
but never ever war. As she lounged against her dustbin in a sort of sexy pose Rolling twigs to her fingers what she'd found inside her nose <laughs> Then flicking gay abandon the globule to the sky But in the dark she missed her mark And glued it to his eye <laughs> the nameless stains upon her clothes held him hypnotized. <laughs> As a sweeping gaze swept across the acreage of her thighs. The feast of flesh he saw before him made him undulate And thank the Lord that happiness Was never sold by weight <laughs> He stared upon her bulging spot so pussyful and white <laughs> Did upon her walls of flesh as he imitated trite. He stared upon her throbbing veins so blue and varicose. Till fifteen pints of Guinness demanded to get loose. <laughs> Foam exploded from his throat and splattered everywhere. There were bits of sweet corn on her face and carrots in her hair. <laughs> Tomato skins and other things upon her he endowed. She was nothing much to rave about, but she looked quite tasty now. <laughs> He decided not to kiss her lips <laughs> Cause he was rather weak and shy oh He was feeling flamboyant <laughs> Flamboyant? Flamboyant is actually a scientific description of a glob of snot in a milk bottle <laughs> feeling flamboyant and he knew the reason why he pressed upon her 40 facts and another 40 more and he said well it were worth it I've never come like that before <laughs> thank you <laughs> I decided that uh, I'd go in a pub and get a few pints down me and uh, suddenly this man emerged with a pig under his arm with a wooden leg and I was only an innocent by wobbler but what happened? The man with the pig with the wooden leg stood at the bar quite innocently as you do when you're in a pub with a pig with a wooden leg under your arm just standing there wanting a pint and a double whiskey for the pig <laughs> the bloke says, uh, what are you doing in the pub with a pig with a wooden leg under your arm? He said, oh, phew, phew, my pig. Famous, brilliant pig. The bravest pig in the entire universe. said, this pig is so brave, I always bring him out for a drink with me. I said, well, what good is a pig with a wooden leg? He said, you don't know how brave this pig is, honestly. This pig, when I first bought it, in the first week the house burned down, 
This pig hurtled through into the burning wreckage, grabbed all my family that were overcome by smoke and fumes, dragged every one of them out, the kids, the 45 neighbours, the lot. Dragged them all out onto the front lawn, went in, got the coloured telly, the video, <laughs> all out on the front lawn. And stood guard over it and saved them. Said, yeah, but I mean, a pig with the wooden legs a bit much. And he said, oh, yeah, but you don't know how brave this pig is. He said, a couple of weeks later, when we were going down Trent for a walk, said, uh, this boat full of old age pensioners went down. All old age pensioners drowning and gasping in the sewerage. Going down. My pig didn't think twice. Jumped over Trent Bridge, into the water, swam up, rescued every one of them, dived down time and time again, risked his life and saved every old age pensioner, dragged them to shore, gave them artificial respiration, went out and got the luggage, got that ashore, the lot. Very brave, this pig. And I said, yeah, but God, pig, I mean, what good's a pig with a wooden leg? He said, oh, well, let's put it this way, man. If you got a pig this bloody brave, would you eat it all at once? Anyway. <laughs> Uh, that wasn't true. I'll give you a blues. Uh, now a blues is a soul that uh, a song that is sung from the soul, which is a, a romantic area just behind your guts, and and when you sing a blues, it pours out. I mean, there's different sorts of blues. There's the West Bridgeford blues. There's a Southern Delta Blues, you know, East Bridgeford. <laughs> and uh, you get all different sorts of blues. Well, this is a straight blues, and it's called, I've got those Alan Lomax ain't been around to record me yet blues. <laughs> Refilled and ready for another go. Yeah. Ain't got quite the same flavour second time around, I believe. Second verse coming up. <laughs> so it's gone down again. Side. 
Lies the body of his morphine white morphine Where was being should have been Hashish hashish dust to dust Cocaine don't get you the opium must the cocaine All around my brain Guitar break now Swedish crap. You try that with a Martin or a Guild or American thing, it's snapping off straight away. Spanish hotel. It was the only person there. They built the lounge and 94 floors, but there was only one bedroom. It's like Spain. Lovely when they finished it. And he was sitting there one morning waiting for his breakfast to show up, and this greasy little thing come along and said, Here is your breakfast, senora. Handed in this bloody plate with this dried up audible cob on it. He said, What's that then? He said, That is your breakfast, senora. He said, Well, with the money I'm bloody paying for this awful, I want something a bit better than that, youth. <laughs> so he said, Ah, we bring you the specialty of the house. Extra special, mm, local delicacy, hard to get. Me bring it you as a special and only guest. So he disappeared out and came back in with this plate with these two things about this big on. <coughs> so what's them? Very local delicacy, very good, hard to get. Bull's balls, very nice. <laughs> Said, well, I've never had them before, but it's better than a very dried up cob, gives one. <laughs> so I got the knife and sawed the first one in half. Got a gob load. Mm. Hey, they were fantastic. I said to him, I want these every day from now on while I'm here. The great. <laughs> so every day for breakfast, he came on with his plate with these whopper great thingies on. <laughs> Got them down there. Last day, the Friday, came in, lifted the little tin thing off. Inside, there were two things about that big, and I said, "Hey, oh, hey, oh, what's going on now?" Trying to con me, are you? I said, all week I've been having the real things, and now, nah, this. I said, what's a crack? What's going on? And the bloke said, well, senor, sometimes a matador he loses. <laughs> Stuff it up your nose. The other moral is plain to see. Ain't no good in smoking tea, Typhoon. It's good for you. Gives you perforations of the brain.
I'll do my other one now. Um, this is also a sort of a blues. Uh, this is a uh, slightly different blues, but it is definitely a blues. You can tell it's a blues because it contains both words yes and babe. Uh, this, however, is in fact a super blues because it contains both words yes and babe in the same line. Now, if you want to join in on the chorus, it's you either join in yes babe or babe yes or however else you can do it. This is a well-known blues. And that's ish. Well, yes it was. Now listen, who's singing this song anyway? Me or me? Me! Right, shut up, let me go on with them. All right. You see, I bought myself something I didn't like. Grapes. I hate bloody grapes. But I like them, you see, that's why I bought them in the first place. And I knew that while I wasn't eating them, I could have one or two. That's what I was going to do, and I thought it was a bloody dirty trick to plow myself. So I kept watching me, so I couldn't. And I was sitting there watching myself, so I couldn't while I did, even though I didn't while and all that. Or to cut a long story short, snip. We noticed a poor Oriental fellow in the end bed, not being visited by anyone, not even himself. He was really sick, you know. I said, shall we go and visit him? I said, all right. So I walked down the aisle, arm in arm, which took a lot of practice. And we stood each side of the man's bed, which took a lot more practice. 
had to be near for something. And we said to the man, in stereo, Are you alright, lad? And he replied, Yeah, I'm at a hole! And dropped dead in mono. I said, did you see that? I said, of course I did. Just then the nurse came over and said, Oi! What are you two doing out of bed? I said, this man's just dropped dead. I said, that's right, I'll witness that. I said, really? What did he say before he died? I said, just a minute, we'll talk this over. Is he? He said, yeah, I'm at a hoo -hoo. I said, well, what does that mean? Well, I didn't know, neither did I. So I went down to a Chinese restaurant, looked on the menu, and when we finally established he hadn't starved to death, went down to the Chinese embassy, knocked on the door, out come a China and said, hello, English pig. So excuse me, sir. Can you tell us what? Yeah, but a ho ho means. Said certainly. Roughly translated, it means you are standing on my oxygen tube. <laughs> the other night, I was stoned, I was feeling all right, I drank a reefer, smoked some gin, waited around for the fun to begin, came a girl up to me, said man let's make whoopee, while I woke up in an empty bed, my pocket's empty, got a pain in my, I'd never have a no more, no more, I'd never have a no more, oh yeah baby, I'd never have a no more, no more, what a friend we have in Jesus, I'd never have a no more, no more. Walk with my baby down by the San Francisco Bay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you my methods. I mean, I think you ought to live with the farm as well. <coughs> Okay, <laughs> methods. So you didn't hear that one, did you? <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. 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 On a bus I woke from sleeping an odour to my nose came creeping A noxious cloud around me seeping The nun beside me grinned As my nostrils started shrinking Trying not to let the stink in My tortured mind was turned to thinking of sounds that pass as wind Sounds we try to muffle Or ease out with a shuffle Sounds we try to keep inside By straining every muscle Sounds that come out uninvited When you're drunk or too excited Sometimes just to be ignited through the wonder of your friends, cha-cha-cha. <laughs> you wondered when the music was coming in, didn't you? <laughs> the lady went to the door and said, Doctor, I think I'm plaggers. He said, don't be silly, it's only wind, go away. A year later, we saw a wheeling a tram down the main street. He said, is that a baby in there? He said, no, he's a fart with on his arm. Bishops drop them in their cassettes, housewives squeeze them through the mattress, underpants are torn to tatters, each stain a strain in vain, cha cha cha. <laughs> Some come out without a warning, off the 
<coughs> car for predetermined <laughs> halfway through a meal or sermon inside a bus or train <coughs> some come out completely <laughs> others are not so neatly <laughs> some blast out like cannon fire and some smell more discreetly <laughs> With gentle sigh and rapid burst, grunts and squeaks and sometimes worse, those that hovered on the verge and go back in again. <laughs>